In this video, we're going to do some practice problems relating to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So our first example says a bacteria colony initially has a population of 14 million bacteria. Suppose that t hours later, the population is growing at a rate of f of t equals 2 to the t million bacteria per hour. And sorry, I'm going to label this f prime of t equals 2 to the t. That is our derivative. That is the rate of change that we have in this problem. So the question asks, what is the total change in the bacterial population in the first two hours? And this is about using the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. This says that if you look at the integral of the derivative, f prime, from 0 to 2, that's in the first two hours. That's from t equals 0 to t equals 2 hours. That that's going to be equal to the original function, f, where I plug in 2, and f where I plug in 0. And note that we've been writing this with the evaluation bar, so let me do that. That's going to be f of t evaluated from 0 to 2, which is going to be f of 2 minus f of 0. All right, that's the total change in the bacteria population. f is the, um, is the population. So f of t is the population at time t. And the rate of change is f prime. So we're going to actually find what that, what that is on the next page. But right now, let's go to the next question. What is the population at t equals 2 hours? So note that that's going to be just f of 2. But using the integral, we could also write that as the change in the population plus the initial population, which is 14 million. So let's see why this is true. This is the change in the population. And this is the initial population. And note that we could have gotten that by just solving for f of 2 in this equation. If we add f of 0 to both sides, we get f of 2 equals the integral from 0 to 2 of f prime of t dt plus f of 0, and note that f of 0 is our initial population, that's the 14 million. All right, so let's see what these exact values are. Note that in order to do this, we're actually looking ahead to chapter 6. You're not really expected to know how to do this at this point, but we have the tools to do it, so let's try to do it right now. That is, what is the value of that integral from 0 to 2? 2 to the t dt. Well, this comes down to finding an antiderivative of 2 to the t. So we need some function whose derivative is 2 to the t. So that means we need to find a function f whose derivative is 2 to the t. And to do this, we're just going to try to play around with it. And I urge you to pause the video and try to find this out on your own. Just try to think about what functions do we have whose derivative is 2 to the t. And I think it's okay just to try to play around with some ideas. We know that the derivative of 2 to the t is close to 2 to the t. It's 2 to the t times 
natural log of two. So that's not quite our answer, but we're sort of close there and we're just off by a constant. So if I took that constant and I looked at one over natural log of two times two to the t, that derivative will be one over natural log of two times two to the t natural log of two. Natural log of twos will cancel out and I'm left with just two to the t and that's what I want. So this is our antiderivative. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this integral, 0 to 2 of 2 to the t dt, is going to be 1 over natural log of 2 times 2 to the t evaluated from 0 to 2. That means that we need to take this function, and every time we see t, we're going to plug in 2. And then we're going to subtract off plugging in 0. We could simplify this maybe if you want. This is going to be 4 minus 1 over natural log of 2. That's going to be 3 over natural log of 2. Uh, and I believe this would actually be in millions. So the answer here is just going to be 3 over natural log of 2 plus 14 million. That's how we would find those exact answers. All the work kind of comes into finding the antiderivative. All right, let's play around with this theorem a little bit more. Next example, the concentration of a medicine and the plasma changes at a rate of h of t. And again, I'm going to write this as h prime. Milligrams per milliliter per hour. So that is a rate, h prime. t hours after the delivery of the drug. So it's a rate at time t. So the first question is explain the meaning of the statement h of 1 equals 50. So h here is going to be the antiderivative. It's our initial function. So if the rate of change is about the concentration of the medicine in the plasma, then H of T is just going to be the concentration of the plasma at time T. So, after one hour, um, after one hour um, of the delivery of the drug, the concentration of plasma. is 50 milligrams per milliliter. H of 1 equals 50. So question B, again, this should be H prime in here. There is 250 milligrams per milliliter of the medication present at time T equals 0. Um, and the integral from 0 to 3, H prime of TDT equals 480. What is the plasma concentration of the medication present three hours after the drug is administered? And before we really dive into this question, I'm just going to write down this fundamental theorem of calculus so we can kind of see what we are dealing with here. We have the integral from 0 to 3 of h prime of t dt is going to be equal to h of 3 minus h of 0. And we know that there is 250 milligrams per milliliter of the medication present at time t equals 0. That means that h of 0 
is going to be 250. We also know that this integral here is 480, and we are asking for what is the plasma concentration of the medicine present three hours after the drug is administered? That is H of three. So we are given the value of this integral, 480. We are looking for H of three, and we are given h of 0 is 250. So putting it all together, we have that h of 3 is going to be 480 plus 250, which is going to be 730 milligrams per milliliter. This is similar to what we did in the first problem, that we can use this equation from the fundamental theorem of calculus and add or subtract things from both sides. In this case, we know two out of the three unknowns, and we can solve for the third. So this last question, again, is going to be a very similar sort of idea. We are given the graph of the derivative, f prime, and if f of 0 equals negative 5, find the values of the function for x equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that is, we are trying to find f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and f of 4. And we're given information about the derivative. So again, I'm just going to show the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we're going to use that in some capacity here. So the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one, says that the integral of the derivative, uh, it should be dx here, f prime of x dx, is going to be the difference in the function value. And what function values we choose are just going to be the function values that we are given and what we're looking for. So we are given that f of 0 equals negative 5. That's going to be one of the function values that I choose. The other function value I'm going to choose is going to be one of the ones that I'm looking for, like 1. And now I've created this equation where I'm going to be able to find two out of the three unknowns. We're given f of 0 is equal to negative 5. We are looking for this unknown f of 1. And this integral is just going to be the area under the curve on the interval 0 to 1. So that's going to be this area which has a base of 1 and a height of 3. That's going to be 1 times 3 has an area of 3 units squared. So this means that 3 is going to be equal to negative 5 minus our unknown. There's a simple little equation. That's going to be 8 is equal to negative our unknown. So that means that f of 1 is equal to negative 8. And we're going to go further now. So that was one application of it, and we've checked off f of 1. Now let's do it for f of 2. Well, here the integral from, uh, let's just do from 1 to 2 of f prime of x dx is going to be equal to f of 2 minus f of 1. And I realized the mistake I made in the previous problem. Uh, I did these guys backwards. It should be f of 1 minus f of 0. So let me rewrite that. f of 1 minus f of 0. We're given f of 0 equals 
negative 5. We are looking for f of 1. This means that f of 1 minus negative 5 here is going to give us that f of 1 is equal to 8. All right, sorry about that mistake. Uh, sorry, f of 1 is going to be 3 equals f of 1 plus 5 f of 1 is going to be negative 2. All right, I think that's all fixed now. Good, okay, so same thing. Now we're going to use f of 1. You could use 0 instead of 1 here. It's the same idea. But we know that f of 1 is going to be negative 2. This area here from 1 to 2 is going to be the area of this triangle which is going to be one half the base times the height or three halves. So we have three halves equals F of two minus negative two. That's gonna give us F of two equals negative one half. And we're halfway done. Now let's find f of three. We can do the integral from, uh, this time let's, let's use one again. From one to three of f prime of x dx, it's gonna be equal to f of three minus f of one. We're looking for f of three. We know f of one is minus two. And we have our area here which is now going to include this negative part, this negative triangle, which has a area of one half the base times the height, which is one half the base times the height negative four, it's gonna be a negative two. So the area here is going to be three halves minus two, we have to include the stuff from 1 to 2 as well, equals f of 3, which we're looking for, minus negative 2. And that's going to give us f of 3 is negative 5 halves. Last one. The integral from 1 to 4. Let's not do 1. Let's do uh, three now instead, just to show there's different ways of doing this. As long as we know the value, we're all good. Uh, of f prime of x dx equals f of four minus f of three. We are looking for f of four. We are given f of three is negative five halves. And this area we're looking for is just the area of this triangle which we know by symmetry is negative two. We could find it again in a similar way. Negative two is gonna be equal to what we're looking for, f of four plus five halves. Minus two minus five halves is gonna give us a negative nine halves. So there are four applications of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Again, using this as an equation where we can add stuff to both sides in order to do this.